You're listening to the Strong and Capable podcast with your host, Bridget Heller. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to this episode of the Strong and Capable. We're hitting off season five a little differently than we have any other season because we're right out the gate with the fabulous Miss Summer Day. I cannot wait for you guys to meet her. Not only are we hitting it out strong with her, but we're bringing God right into the conversation, episode one of this season. I know most of you listeners are God-fearing all about it, so I'm excited for you to hear her, her point of view, her story, and how we can harness the spirit that is in us and through us and works in our life for good, to help us overcome. So with all that, Summer, you want to say hey? Hey, hey, hey. (laughs) I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for asking me, Bridget. No, Bridget. 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 (laughs) Your your listeners know your name very well. Bridget. I'm going to get that right. Bridget. Thank you so much. Bridget. I love it. It's beautiful. Bridget. It's good. I'm loving me. I don't know pretty out. much anything. In fact, I usually don't hear it unless I'm recording. Then I notice that. But usually I don't even hear it. I'm like, oh. And other people will point out, they didn't say your name right. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. So don't worry. It's all good. But let's start right out, out the gate, Summer. Tell us a little bit about your story. I mean, we were talking about it before. We had an amazing, probably too long conversation before we hit record. But... <laughs> What? Yeah, we recorded seven episodes of the podcast before we hit record. Yep, yep, before we hit record. But it was so, so good. So I want those who are listening to know who you are and where you started, where this journey of faith into fear nope, started. Fear into faith. Fear into faith. Gosh, darn it. Faith into fear. Fear, fear into <laughs> faith. <laughs> we can speak words the way they should be said. I swear it. Fear into, can you believe faith into fear? That That's like maybe Ooh. the journeys that a lot of Christians are taking that they shouldn't be. It needs to be opposite, right? Yeah, yeah. We got to learn to shift our fear into faith because sure. I feel like fear happens on the daily. At least for me lately, fear has happened on the daily, you guys. On the daily, I'm writing to the Lord. I'm praying, Lord, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Lord, step me out of fear, doubt, and worry and into faith with you. That's why we call it fear into faith. It's it's shifting out of fear into faith, and it's not a one-time shift. It's the daily shift of the enemy coming at you, depression coming at you, the world, your marriage, whatever it is. You have to make that choice of full surrender with the Lord. Lord, I will choose to step out of the fear today. I'll choose to not go by what my eyes are seeing, but what my heart is speaking. I'll go walk by faith, not by sight. And that's shifting fear into faith. You want me to tell you how the journey started? You know I do. Okay. I like to tell people, I am just a girl who just said a big yes to the Lord. And there are so many layers to my yes. If I could bring it down to to just a couple minutes. Um, When I was was in church in May of 2019, I I had wanted to take my kids to uh, RV. But like for three, maybe six months, right? Just to go back east, let them have a good U.S. history education. I knew people who had done it for a few months, so I thought that would be really great. And in May, praying in church, the Lord showed me a vision. And he actually said, I'm sending your whole family into ministry. Your whole family will lead people to the Lord. I saw a vision of my six-year-old praying for people with a line of people waiting. And he, he said, I want you to pick up your mat and walk. I want you to sell everything have no time frame, no roots, no destination. So it wasn't three to six months. He's like, no time frame. So I'm like, so like a year, he's like, no time frame. And I'm like, okay, this is crazy. My husband's going to think I'm crazy. But I ended up sharing with my husband, the Lord is so good. He confirmed after confirmed after confirmed. And he had given me the date, August 1st, 2020. Gave me the date August 1st, 2020. And if you guys remember anything about 2020, so from May of 2019, we started selling all of our stuff. COVID hits and everyone's like, are you guys still going? I'm like, yeah, half my family thinks I'm nuts. People are like, well, what does it mean going to ministry? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I'll speak at churches. I have no idea. The Lord has not told me. If he tells you, would you please let me know? Continue to sell our stuff. COVID hits. My husband loses his job. He was in the entertainment industry. And we were going to be able to travel and have him do certain gigs on the road. 
And now it's going to be the money we're going to live off of. So now we have no income. And I'm still like, yeah, but we're still going. The Lord said the RV would be provided. We had no idea how that was going to happen. But we just kept saying yes to the Lord. And then in, in um, April, I finished reading the Bible cover to cover. It took me two years. And as soon as I was done, the Lord was like, you know, patting me on the back. Good job. I'm so proud of you. Yet I want you to do it again because your goal was one year. So do it again. Hit your goal. It'll be great. And I told him a big fat no. <laughs> I had said yes before, but this time I'm like, no, Lord, that's a lot. Um, I don't want to. I don't even know if I'll ever read it again. Ask me again later. But I love how the Lord was relentless, relentless, relentless. So it took a couple months, but I finally negotiated with God. I don't know if any of your listeners have ever done that and ever negotiated with the Lord, but I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do a Facebook Live. I'm going to find five friends to read the Bible with me and they can hold me accountable and I'll hit my goal of a year. And I got to imagine that the Lord was laughing at me so hard when I said that because I did a Facebook Live and I had 20 women say yes right away. And then they started sharing it with their friends and I had 200 on the first day. And then two and a half weeks later, we had 6,700 women in a Facebook group to read the Bible cover to cover. Which sounds awesome, right? Except I was crying, like screaming, crying on my bathroom floor to the Lord saying, I can't do this. I don't, I don't know how to lead a Bible study. I've never been in a Bible study ever. Um, I was raised Mormon. And if these Christian women find that out, they might show up at my house and lynch me. Like, I'm just not, I am not, <laughs> I'm not ordained. I'm not a pastor's wife. I am none of these things, Lord, right? I'm not worthy to do any of this. And, and he was so gentle in that moment. He's like, look, I made you, right? I know who you are. I know who you're not, but you're a gatherer of people. And all I want you to do is encourage them. You don't have to interpret scripture. That's not what I need from you. I need you to encourage them and get them to finish. That's all I want. I want you to get as many women to finish as possible. And so we started July 13th of 2020 was 6,700 women in a Facebook group to read the Bible. And I finally knew what my ministry was. So if you guys are doing math from May of 2019 until July of 2020 for 14 months, I said yes to the Lord that I would go into ministry with no idea of where we were going, what we were going to do and selling everything and really being all in for the Lord. And I say that because God is just looking for our best yes. And oftentimes we say yes and then adversity hits and then we change our mind or becomes too hard or we start to doubt. Did I really hear from the Lord? Was it re really what he wanted? Even if we get confirmation, even if we see miracles, signs and wonders, we still are like, I don't know. And we struggle. But I can tell you when you say yes and you aren't moved and you aren't shaken, the Lord will never let you down. He will never disappoint. So we did. We led. 6,700 people in a Facebook group to read the Bible. And that was uh, year one. And the funny thing is, the group was called Fear Into Faith because I had started my coaching program called Fear Into Faith. And there was a couple hundred women in there. So when people said yes, I was like, well, I don't want to run a second group. That would be a lot of work. So just join this group. And I figured some of the women in that group might want to do it with us anyway. I had no idea that that group was going to get taken over. So it it became, the movement was called Fear Into Faith. <laughs> and everything we started doing was Fear Into Faith. So that was year one. Then we did year two. We're almost finished with year three. And we have about 10,000 people doing year three. And we're launching year four, uh, September 18th. And would love for you guys to join us. If you've never read the Bible cover to cover in a year, I cannot recommend enough that you do it. And with this community, we have emails we send, we have text messages, we have an app that's launching, which is going to be so cool, interactive, where you can track your progress and see how well you're doing. We're launching a TV show where you can tune in live three times a day on the app and people will be reading. We have 100 plus different people that the Lord is sending to, to read and record. So you have no excuse. You're not going to do it alone. You can tune in and listen if you're not a strong reader. We're doing everything we can to keep people in it, which is what the Lord said, get as many to finish as possible. He also gave me one more vision when I was freaking out. He gave me a vision of an event when I said, Lord, how do I get them to finish? 
he said, have an event at the end of the year. So it was kind of like that carrot in front of the horse, you know, Mm -hmm. do this. And then at the end of the year, we're all going to be in person. We're going to meet each other. We're going to be able to hug each other, pray with each other. And part of the event would be that we would read the end of Revelation out loud together. And the event happened and it was just more incredible than we could have ever imagined. And so I thought everything was for one year. I was wrong. (laughs) I'm pretty sure this might be my life calling in ministry because now our goal is to get a million people in a year, a million people to read the Bible cover to cover and to fill a stadium of people, to fill a stadium of like 30,000 people coming from all over the world to finish reading the Bible um, out loud. And as far as we know, that's never, ever been done. So we're finishing year three. We have our end of the year, year three event, September 14th through the 16th, and then launching into year four. In January, the Lord told me, tell anyone who would listen that 100,000 people would come this year. And um, he's doing it. That was before I got approached by a TV producer to do a TV show. So now we're like, oh, that's how thousands and thousands of people are going to know about what you're doing, Lord, because he's just opening big and incredible doors and alignments and all kinds of stuff right now. So we're just hanging on for the ride, really. I love so much of what you said. I'm trying to think like, where do I want to start? Where do I want to start? But (laughs) one of the things that really strikes me is that what you were listening to those divine nudges and then you were acting. And that always feels scary because the unknown, you don't know, you don't know, but you always are able to accomplish whatever it is that you were called to accomplish. And in the greater world outside of religion, they call that the universe. Listen to the nudges of the universe. But if you're religious, you know, this is God. This is God saying, hey, I'm putting this on your heart for a a reason. And I need you to step forward because there's a work for you to do. And I will make the way. I will make the way. So again, in the world, they would say the universe is conspiring in your favor is the the phrase that they would use. But I will make the way and the way opens up and you don't usually know how it is. And that takes so much faith over and into your fear. <laughs> like, right, you cannot have the fear to to walk in this kind of faith. You have to remove it and let it go. And it will show up. I'm not saying it won't show up. I'm saying that when it shows up, you go, oh, no, no. What's fighting for me is greater than this fear. And so I'm going to keep walking forward. There's this Christian song. I love it. And she talks about how her Goliath is overshadowed by the shadow of the Almighty. Like, yeah, the Goliath yeah. is only so big, but the shadow of the Almighty is way bigger than the Goliath you're facing right now. So, and I, oh, I love it. every time I hear, like, yes, yes, my Goliath is nothing, nothing, right? But, So many of our fears, they feel like our Goliath. And so when you choose faith, you choose faith to overcome and work through and move through, it's it's a transformation. And that's what you experienced. You, Who you were then is not who you were a year later. And who you were a year later is definitely not who you are today. Yeah. Yeah. People ask me all the time, like, um, you know, did you ever not want your calling or whatever? I told people. In the last three years, there's been probably at least a hundred times that I've prayed, a hundred times that I've cried to the Lord and said, I can't do this. It's too big. A hundred times that I've walked in fear, a hundred times that I've been disobedient and said, "Um, I don't want to tell everybody a hundred thousand people are coming this year. You tell them, don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Like a little five-year-old who's like throwing their shoes on the ground going, I don't want to put my shoes on. I've done that so many times. A lot of times people just see your social media or they see what you're doing or you're living in an RV. That's Mm -hmm. gotta be awesome and great. They don't see the behind. So I wanna tell Mm -hmm. you that when there's pushback in your calling, it should like, it should be like a war cry. It should get you enthused to get back up. And so everybody that I know has their moments of getting crushed by fear. But fear is a choice. It's a choice. You can choose to not agree with it. You can choose to get back up. And if I can preach just for a second, Bridget, 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 dang it, Bridget, if I can preach just for a second, um, you know, fear is a really big deal, like a really big deal. And at our events, Fear into Faith, that's the first thing that I taught, that I teach on. Because when I read the Bible cover to cover, I was shocked at what's in there and what's not in there. That's why I want people to read it for themselves. And Fear is mentioned 365 times in the Bible, 
And if you add doubt, worry, or tremble, it's over 600. There's over 600 messages from the Lord telling you not to fear, telling you not to doubt, telling you not to worry. And when I compared that to like, everybody knows the 10 commandments, right? Thou shalt not kill. That shall not kill is only in the Bible 10 times, three times directly in the 10 commandments and seven times indirectly. And if you are a smart person, 600 compared to 10, Fear is a huge deal to the Lord. Huge. I take it as like, it's a commandment. And my question always is, if he's mentioned it 600 times, but we're choosing to walk in it. Now, that doesn't mean you won't feel fear. It's not your fault if you feel fear, but it's your opportunity to choose out of it, to make the decision, to pray, to hit your knees, to call a friend, to say, hey, I'm in fear right now and I don't want to be. Because if you choose to walk in fear, are you choosing to be disobedient to the word of God? I believe you are. I believe he's not little about this fear thing. I think he's like the booming voice of the Lord saying, do not fear, be strong and courageous, do not fear. And we've got to make that decision not, not to partner with fear. You know, he calls it a spirit of fear for a reason. Second Timothy 1, 7 says, I did not give you a spirit of fear. And I believe it is, it's a dark demonic spirit. Fear is a tool of the enemy that he is using to crush God's people. And so that's why it's the, the root of my ministry and the heart of my ministry is helping God's people to learn to crush fear and to learn to crush it every day and teach other people how to do it as well. Fear's a sneaky little guy. Mm -hmm. And fear is crushing. It is the thing. It will stop you in your tracks, keep you frozen, keep you in bed. When I, I struggle with anxiety and depression at various times, I, a lot of it has to do with hormones. We're not going to talk about that today. <laughs> but like it is it's very real for me it feels very much like an attack and i know that when i'm in that place i can hardly get out of bed i can it takes everything in me to get out of bed and i talked about this i released the episode of this podcast over the summer and i talked about this the only thing that got me up was i was in the mesa easter pageant which is the world's largest easter pageant about jesus christ and his life and it's here in Mesa, Arizona, and it's a cast of 500 people, live animals, professional lighting. It's crazy. So our family's in that every spring. And the only thing that got me out of bed was getting out of bed for that. It was God. God got me out of bed every single day and kept me going until I could work through that. And it was intense and overwhelming. Fear can stop you. Fear will stop you if you allow it to. And if you're not holding on to something bigger than the fear, you're just stuck. Yeah. You're just stuck. And another example real quick is when we started the podcast Connected in Christ, some of the listeners know I started a second podcast called Connected in Christ, five women of different backgrounds, but the opposition was so, so, so strong that we ended up on a lot of, I'm sure you know about this summer, a lot of behind the scenes calls with the team of like, okay, here's what we're facing. Here's how, what, what's plan B? Z, X, Y, like we, ANC didn't work. So now we're on D and F and G. And how do we work through this? What is the next step? What is the right step? What does the, the Lord want from us? Not just our will. What is his will? It's a lot to weed through because you're not just like in normal business. You're trying to do it a certain way. And I remember saying to the ladies, I said, all of this pushback could be terrifying. Instead, it's verifying. Oh, so good. So as soon as I said it, we all like, oh, right? It doesn't like the words flew out of my mouth. And it has stuck with me ever since. Every time fear comes up, I'm like, no, no, this isn't terrifying. This is verifying. I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Because this would not be showing up if I wasn't meant to walk forward. Mm, that's good. I'm stealing that. Well, don't totally steal it, but yeah, I'm like, I'm going to say that on stage at the event next week. That's so good. <laughs> so good. I love it. Yeah, it's, but it's true. The daily choice. And I love that you're talking about the pushback, the dark pushback. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're talking about those kind of things. As you and I spoke about earlier, like <laughs> we live in a spiritual battle that is happening all around us all the time. And it does seem like most people are not wanting to acknowledge that. I think since COVID, 
it's a little more people are starting to realize that there is a dark force in this world literally working against you. And if you're a believer, read your Bible. It's in there. There's no scripture as far as I have ever found that says Jesus died on the cross and he took all the demons with him. Like, no, it's very obvious that all of that stuff is super real. And so I'm, um, I love that you're willing to talk about that on your podcast. Though strong and capable, we've always been very real and straight up because the thing is, is when you're struggling, it's isolating. And that is Satan's greatest trick. Isolate you and you feel alone and hopeless and then you don't move. It's Again, it's fear. It stops you. Mm-hmm. Right? So that is the greatest trick. But if we talk real, hey, yeah, it's hard to feed my kids dinner every night. Or yeah, we had a meltdown last night. Or oh, yeah, we like. Yeah, marriage isn't always easy. Finances sometimes suck. <laughs> Let's talk real instead of the internet. The, the thing that sells it is things that are beautiful and sarcasm. And I love sarcasm, but I have a strong, like, it hurts. There's a lot of sarcasm that is very harmful. And things that are pretty, there's pretty moments in life, but not all of life is pretty. Yeah. In fact, it's, it's not. And I think we got to talk about those things. We're going to talk about the struggle. Summer did not become the summer you are today without the struggle. Yeah. You didn't. Yeah, for sure. And I know I didn't either. I didn't come become who I am. Well, the strong and capable is based off of this moment when I lost my sister. This is the greatest pain I've ever experienced in my life. And yet it's turned into the most beautiful thing that I get to do every day now. So the oh, suffering goodness. is everything. It's the beauty from ashes. Mm-hmm. Beauty from mm-hmm. ashes. I love it. So when we're suffering, I mean, so you do this Bible challenge. How did the Bible become so important to you, I guess? When, so you read it, what led to reading it in two years? The original goal. Like what yeah, led you I, there, I, I guess? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to share that. I'd also love to share a shameless plug. I would love all of your listeners to do me that. So. <laughs> Y'all can go to fearintofaith.com. We've been talking about fear into faith. Go there, get registered, join us, join us, join us, join us. Um, I think reading the Bible cover to cover in a year is the most incredible thing. And it gives you authority. There's a lot of great Bible studies out there. I think deep dives are important and reading it chronological, all that's awesome. But when you read it cover to cover from Genesis to Revelation, from page one to page 1200, something happens. You don't know everything that's in there. But I feel like the Lord literally, it's like he gives you a badge of honor. He gives you a badge of authority and he needs people right now in these times walking in a level of authority that you get when you read that cover to cover. And so that, I'm so adamant about that. Uh, so how it all started, great question. There's a beautiful and amazing lady named Danny Johnson that used to do business conferences. And then on the end of the first day, she had an optional training that night and you would go and she would teach you how everything that's she taught, it comes from the greatest success book ever written in the Bible. And I'm like, come on. And she'd give you all the scripture references. You know, I, I was born and raised in church and I dabbled in reading some of the Bible off and on, you know, throughout a lot of my life, but I had never really had anyone say, read the whole thing for yourself. I never had anyone challenge me to do that. And she was very adamant about you guys should read the Bible for yourself. I think back then, and this was like 12, 15 years ago, she was on number 12. She was on her 12th time reading the Bible cover to cover in a year. She also talked about how she spent like two hours every morning um, reading the Bible on her face, praying. And I thought she was crazy. I'm like, Dude, that is like way too much. I could maybe do like five minutes. I don't know how you have time for two hours. And the crazy part now is like, I've done that multiple times. I've multiple, I, like so often. I mean, I'm like a minimum of an hour in the morning unless there's something going on that I want to spend with the Lord and I've shifted. But she was the first person to plant that seed. And then in her community, there was a lot of believers in the community that they were also doing it. So it made it easier to be in a community with people that that that's what they wanted to do was read the Bible. You know, it starts from the top down. She was inspiring a lot of people. Um, my husband was raised Catholic and then he decided he hated God or there was no God. So I married him in this whole, my parents both died. And if there is a God, I'd have to hate him too much for taking my parents. Um, his mom died one year into our marriage um, and his dad died when he was 18. So he was very bitter and angry to the Lord. 
but it was in that community and everything that he got led back to the Lord and even got baptized. And so it was, that was all that started it. And uh, community is important. That's why I love that we're doing this Bible study in community. I love that we live in such a time as Zoom because we can get on Zoom calls and, and social media and all the things. It's like the Lord knew we were going to need all that when COVID hit. Um, and I love that we have a community that's outside the four walls of the church because people like my husband. He was hurt. He didn't want to go to a church. Um, a lot of people get, they have church hurt. And, and we just want them to be outside those walls, outside of religion, outside of anything. This is just you and your Bible and the Lord. And he will speak to you more profoundly when you are in the word with him. And you'll know him. You'll know his character. And you'll know what he thinks about you if you're in the word with him. And so that's why we call it the global Bible revival, because we have got to get people in the word and we have got to re have a revival of the word. Did that answer your question? So then yeah. I was fired. I started reading it. It's really funny. I started reading it and then I went to Israel and the Lord convicted me that I had to start over. I don't know why. I think I was halfway through and he said, start over when I got back from Israel because I got a new Bible. That's what it was. And he's like, start over and start on this one. I'm like, Whoopt. and then um, it took two years after that, it took two years after I went to Israel, going to Israel. If you guys want to up your faith with the Lord, go to Israel. I feel like you go to Israel and you're like, I'm 10 steps closer to heaven. I think I hear God more. That is one of my biggest dreams. If I could out for our honeymoon. So 21 years ago, I was like, I want to go to Israel. So now it's now that my kids are grown and leaving the house, I'm like, it's back, guys. The dream is back. It's happening sometime in the next couple of years because it is my number one. I so want to go to Israel. I always wanted to go. I heard once you pray to speak to God. And if you want to hear his answer, you read the scriptures. Oh, that's so. good. That's good. I, yeah. I say it a little bit different. You read the scriptures, but also you spend time in silence with him. A lot of people are like, I want to hear from the Lord. I'm like, well, how long, how, how often do you just sit there and shut up and listen? <laughs> you know, or do you pray that you want to hear him? Pray. Oh. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. So pray and say, Lord, I want to hear from you more. I want you to speak to me. I want, I want to be able to boldly proclaim things from you. I want to be able to say a bold yes from you. I, I want to hear you more. So be in his word, be in his presence, pray, and then be quiet and listen. And he will speak to you. Be still. Yes. Yes. Be still and and ask. I actually had a great conversation with the lady. She was, I never pray. I never pray ever. And I was like, what? And like, took me back a minute. Whoa. Because I am, my days are rocky without that pausing. Yeah. having that conversation i do a 20 minute meditation where really i listen to this beautiful music and i am seeking what today this is my daily ritual my morning ritual without that i am all over the place a hot mess because that centers me and focuses where i'm supposed to go but as i talked to her more i discovered that she could pray she literally is one of those people that has her heart open to god all day long all day long and mm. she's hearing his word because she's just open. And I think that's another thing is like intentional habit, but then being open. We're so quick to, I did my thing and close ourselves off again. And we've mm -hmm. got to remain open. Open can be painful because you're going to feel things and know things and it can be uncomfortable. But it's also where you receive the greatest answers for what next. Yeah. Amen. So good. I, I love it. it. I love it. So, I know. You know, you got to spend time in the secret place. That's when he's going to speak to you. Okay. So if you had, as we wrap up here, we just got a couple of minutes left. If you had two tips, your top tips for like, okay, you're in a bad place. This is not good because we're all about overcoming this season in the strong and capable. I'm pretty sure I know what your tips are going to be. We're just going to do it anyway. We're going to do this formally. These are your one, two, do these two things. If you're stuck, what are the top two things that they got to do to move? forward to get unstuck to start the healing journey what is what are your top to do it yes. okay i love it i love it um spend your mornings with the lord like if, if you're not where you want to be and in your life ask yourself are you starting your day off with intention with time with the lord in prayer in worship like put on some worship music go dance around your house all the things so that's the first thing is you got to set your day up um the Lord asks in the Bible for our first fruits. And that's one of the things that he really revealed to me is he wanted the first fruits of my day. See, I thought in order to really follow the Lord and make him a priority, you had to spend more time with him than other things. Time does not equal priority. 
You can work 40 hours a week, but only spend five with God and still have him be your priority. If it's your first thought, best thought, if you're giving the first fruits of your morning to him, if you just did 15 minutes a day consistently, what would that look like? So that's tip one. The second one I love talking about Proverbs 18, 21 is death and life and the power of the tongue and those who love it shall eat its fruit. And I find most people out there that are strong believers in the Lord that are praying, that are reading their Bible, aren't taking that scripture literally. They're not realizing that the Lord has made you powerful. They say, you know, as a man thinketh, so he is. They say, um, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. I take that a step further. Whether you speak, you can or speak, you can't, you're right. God is so awesome that he made your brain to be in agreement with you. He made your brain to be a goal-crushing machine. He made your brain, I like to share it this way, it's like your brain's a captain of a ship, right? And whatever you say, the job of the captain is to say, okay, go, go find the evidence and prove her right. And I'll give you a little tip. The thing that I hear the most often is people will say little things like, I'm tired. Okay, I'm super guilty of this. I was born and raised very sick and tired. I was in the hospital at age two because I wasn't breathing and I had severe asthma and allergies. And I grew up my whole life sicker than any other kids. I had to take more naps as an adult than anyone I knew. And I realized I would say I'm tired all the time, right? I'd go to events and people would say, how are you feeling? And I'm like, oh, I'm tired. But you know what happened? There was one time at this event and this woman came up to me and I don't know why. I think I was just extra sassy that day. <laughs> and she's like, how are you feeling? And she and I had been up till two o'clock in the morning. So I knew she was waiting for me to say, I am exhausted. I got no sleep. But instead, I looked her in the eyes and I was like, I got all the sleep the good Lord intended. And she <laughs> laughed and I laughed and she went on her way. I thought it was hilarious. So for the rest of the conference, anytime somebody asked me how I was feeling, I said to get a laugh, I got all the sleep the good Lord intended. How are you doing? And something crazy happened. I didn't realize it till about a week later that I had not been tired that whole three days. I had not snuck away early at lunch to take a nap because sometimes that's what I had to do to keep up with other people. I wasn't sick for two days or in bed because a lot of times if I had gone to events, I had to plan like I'll be out for the count for two days to catch up on rest. None of that happened. And I started wondering, shifting I'm tired into being funny and saying I got all the sleep the good Lord intended. Was that, was that what happened? Was it really just shifting what I said? And here's the truth. The captain of the ship, when I said I'm tired, was like, oh, yeah, she was up till 2 a.m. Uh, she only got five hours of sleep. Oh, halfway through that night, her five-year-old threw up, right? So they would report her back and go, she is, she's tired. And what would I be all day? Okay, my year. Yeah. But then yeah. when I shifted it to say, I got all the sleep the good Lord intended, it, it radically changed my life. And that was about five, six years ago. I go to events all the time. And I no longer ever say I'm tired. Even if my husband asks me, he knows I'm tired. I say, I got all the sleep the good Lord intended. And he knows I didn't even get any. I do not make agreements with I'm tired. And so for a basic tip, if, if you're listening, ask yourself, what is it that you're saying every day, every other day? I hope that you're convicted if you've been saying I'm tired to literally shift that one thing. The way that you can have success in shifting your life is you have to decide in advance what's the alternative. So what are you going to say instead of I'm tired? A lot of people say I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed out. I am not good enough. I'm not smart enough. What are you saying that's attached to I'm? Because you are either speaking death or you're speaking life. And what you speak about, you will have more of. 100% what comes out of your mouth, you are going to eat that fruit. So do you want to eat death or life? Do you want to be tired or have all the sleep the good Lord intended? Because your words have the power to create heaven or hell every day in your life. It's darkness or light. It's death and the power of the tongue. That would be my tip. Look at your life. At what are you saying? And make a decision and write it down. Put it on a post-it note. Put it up on your computer and make a decision of what you're going to say um, differently. You have that much power amen, in your amen. life with how you speak. Amen, amen. And I just want to add to that. I run a 
monthly free class called A Fresh View. And we learn how to take those negative thoughts, find the patterns, isolate them, and rewrite them. Um, and here's what I want the listeners to know, because probably a lot of them have been to my class because they've been on this journey with me for a long time. When you include God in your rewrite, it has a better, not a better, it, it, in, it brings in that higher power. And it is more transformative. It's kind of like they say when you're healing trauma, you'd have to go through the motions 400 times. But if you heal trauma in play, it's like 20 times. It's totally different. So it's the same thing with our words. When we change them on our own, they're powerful. And like you said, captain of the ship changes. But when you change them with God, invoking God, having him in your life, it drastically changes how quickly those patterns are going to change for you. So I love, love that you shared that tip because it's a truth that I don't often get to share is that you can change it and that's great. But if you change it with God, the transformation is almost immediate and longer lasting. It's so so true because what is the captain of the ship doing? It's also going, oh, and she believes in God. So it's anchoring in your faith actually every time you say it. I did not realize that. I'm going to have to add that one on too. Yeah. Yeah. Anchoring your faith and releasing. So that's one of the big things with thoughts, right? We get in these thought patterns, but when you're able to fully release it, and which you do when you hand it to a divine power, then that transforms you completely. And it doesn't always, it doesn't usually sneak back in the same way. Mm -hmm. So very, very cool. I love it. I love those tips. Okay. So as we actually wrap up now, officially, it's the How, Summer, can they connect with you? How can they, you had mentioned fireyourfaithnow.com earlier before this episode. So fire your fear. Fire your fear now. You said fire your faith. Oh my gosh. I tell you what, you want to talk about opposition? It's coming right on my mouth here. So good. Yeah, okay, right before we got on here, right before we got on here, I just felt like, you know, I really want all your people to join the Bible Challenge. I'd love for all of them to come to the event. So our event is September 14th through the 16th in Dallas, Texas. So if you're listening and you're around Dallas, Texas, I got to believe chances are the Lord wants you to actually be there, be in the room. We can pray for you, lay hands on you. There's power in the room. There's power in proximity. We also do have a virtual option for people to attend if you don't happen to you know, want to be in Dallas and still convincing Bridgette, yes, to, to come from Arizona and hang out with us. Uh, we do have a virtual option and I have not done this. And I've been interviewed on a lot of podcasts and stuff lately. I've not done this, but I felt like the Lord was just saying to just bless your people, that there's some people that it, it could have a profound effect on them for such a time as this, that they really have been debilitated by fear. And so two things, if you've been crushed by fear, fear into faith, a three-day event, We're going to give you so many tips and tools to help you walk that out. And the other thing that we do in our event is if you are a leader, especially in ministry, I keep having ministry leaders that come to our conference and say, this is the number one event I've ever been to that fills me up with Holy Spirit fire, that fills me up with new levels of faith so I can go out from a place of replenishment and do the work that the Lord is calling me to. So if you're in leadership, come and get replenished so you can go crush the calling on your life. So the Lord told me to just offer a free ticket. And I have not done that at all. So I'm like, okay. And I even was like, Richette, I don't know how to actually do that. Okay, let's, um, we're going to invent something right now. So I do have an ebook. If you go to fireyourfearnow.com and you register for the ebook, we are, we'll send you an email and we'll just bless you with a free um, ticket in person. If we've got space, I'll totally get you in virtual for sure. And just attend. And I'm telling you, clear your schedule. There's like 15 different speakers and the power of God is going to move tremendously in those three days. So that's what I have for you. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. I can't wait to hear the story of who that was specifically for. Cause I'm yeah. telling you, I feel like the Lord is like, just do this. There's somebody that would not otherwise be able to attend. And um, I just want to bless your people. I love what you're doing here. I love that you're training people to be strong and capable because that is, that's my heart desire. I want people to know they're strong and capable when they crush fear and they step into faith. 
faith is what makes people strong and capable. Strong. That's, that's the win for the sails of the boat of strong and capable, right? Mm-hmm. So I just, I love everything you're doing. I love your heart. I feel like we had a very divine appointment today and the seven episodes we didn't record before we got on the call. <laughs> but that were so good. So good. Oh, you're amazing. What a great thing you're doing here. I just pray blessings over you. Oh, can I pray? You are welcome to pray. I, always, I told Summer before I recorded, whatever the spirit leads, that's where we go. Yeah. So go. yeah. I just want to pray for you, Bridget. Aha, uh-huh, I got that right. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just pray for this podcast, Strong and Capable Father. I just pray that you would continue to expand uh, the listenership, expand the horizons, Father. I just ask that you would bless her tremendously, Father. You would enlarge her tent pegs. You would bring financial abundance into her family, Father. Uh, I just love her heart, her servant heart. And Father, I just pray over this new podcast that they're launching, Father, that you would have a, a supernatural launch into, um, into its reach. And I just pray a blessing over anybody that's listening, Father, if they have felt debilitated or crushed by fear or a sense of hopelessness or isolated, Father, I just pray that you would speak to them, that you would bring them miracle signs and wonders and confirmation um, today that you were using this one podcast episode to go after the one and to speak to them, Father. Bring them undeniable confirmation that you see them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you, Summer, so much for coming on and sharing your light and your truth and everything you're doing to help us move from fear into faith. Yes. I did it. <laughs> so good. So good. So good. Yes. So also, I guess I can remind them you can join the Bible study at fearandofaith.com. Yeah. Join it at Fear and to Faith. And if you want to check out Summer, of course, I will all, all of her bio and all the links. In the show notes, or you can DM me on social media and I will send her stuff your way. Remember, friends, you're strong and capable. You got this. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Strong and Capable podcast. I would love to connect with you. Come find me on Instagram at Bridget.Heller or Facebook in the Strong and Capable Facebook group. And if you would love to join the Queen Circle, which I know you do, it's only 99 cents for your first hook. So come try it out. A dollar. It's the best place on the internet. Have a wonderful day. And never forget, you are strong and capable.